What's the crack? Today I'm going to be talking about my 10 favorite musicians on YouTube. I've been running a wave of positivity the last few days and I wanted to spread some of that positivity by sharing with everyone on here some super awesome musician YouTubers that I like to watch and would like to recommend to you. Obviously you're more likely to know who these YouTubers are because I'm such a small channel rather than hear about them from me, but I'm going to put them in order of my favorite just because uh, it's my video and I feel like doing it. So, I won't delay. The first one is number 10, Jared Dines. Uh, despite all the issues that might be surrounding Jared, I can't deny that he's had um, a big effect on the YouTube music and guitar scene in general. Also, uh, you know, he's one of those first YouTubers that I ever really became a fan of, even back in like 20. 14 or 15 I think something like that I entered a competition he was doing where you had to put vocals over uh, a song that he made an instrumental and I think that was won by a guy called lights or something but I entered it and this was back before I was in college for this stuff had no idea about um, anything and it was literally just me playing the song on a speaker in the background and I had a microphone in front of me shouting into it in one take it was awful it was just pure awful but that was one of the first times when I was like okay I should really figure out how to record myself properly so I can at least make myself sound good even if I'm not good I would not have him on the list aside from those points and also I do still watch Dickie Dines every now and again because Dickie Dines is like you know it's Fine. Number nine is Wheezy Waiter. So, obviously he's not a YouTube musician, but he is a musician on YouTube. And he is such a wholesome guy, such a, a, a positive influence to anyone who watches his videos. There's a huge amount of stuff that I've seen him go through from, you know, his daily vlogs to his challenge videos now. Everything that he used to do over the years, it was just fun and interesting. And throughout his time on YouTube, he has had so many different uh, types of videos. And as a result, he does have a lot of stuff about music up there. Uh, and he writes a lot of silly songs and he writes a lot of them off the cuff. And he's, you know, just a, a cool guy to watch. And his band Driftless Pony Club are pretty good. Um, as I understand it, they are also working on their new album, either writing it or recording it, I don't know which one, but since they're doing that, I would imagine there's going to be a lot more music-based stuff on his channel over the next few weeks and months. On top of that, he's also like been on YouTube like 13 years and has not hit a million subscribers, but he is so close because that Quitting Sugar video did so well and just like I think he got like a couple hundred thousand subscribers from that like I remember watching him when he had 200,000 and then all of a sudden now he's so close to it so it would be really cool if more people subscribed to him and I'd feel like there'd be like I'd vicariously live through him by seeing that he got to a million subscribers that'd be really nice because he's just such a wholesome dude go watch him number eight is or david or david makes drum videos he has been on youtube for quite a few years i don't remember when i started watching him but he basically does diy videos but before diy was like its own youtube genre type thing and um, he's really interesting because his videos are so laid back in the sense that he doesn't seem like he's a character he doesn't seem like he's presenting himself a certain way it just seems like it would literally be him the exact way that he is i don't see any character or any eccentric personality that he's creating just for the sake of a YouTube video. The thing that gives me the impression that he's really genuine and it's not just a character is that he always puts the focus, the focus on the thing that he's doing, not necessarily that it's him that's doing it. You know, some YouTubers might have it be like, oh, well, this is me doing this, but he gives it in a way where it's like, this is a thing that's being done. So the camera's always on what is being done, not the fact that it's him doing it and well done, look at me, I'm the greatest. He doesn't really come across that way. So if you're looking for like cool DIY stuff that you can do with like drums and instruments and stuff like that, it's really interesting to watch and it's also really satisfying because he's obviously really professional about the way that he does adjustments and fixes and restorations and you know, by the end of the video you will see a really nice product that he's gotten either out of like you know an old Ludwig 
Black Beauty or he's gotten an old Tama kit that he's restored or he's something like that. It's like it's all pretty much the same thing, but it's such a good niche that if you want to just like binge watch it, he's got hundreds of videos you can go through. Number seven is Andrew Huang. One of my first experiences in thinking how did he afford that came from watching Andrew Huang. I started watching him a couple of years ago and I think he, there was some video of him standing in his living room of his house. So first of all, being millennial, I'm like, holy shit, he can afford a house, that's incredible. But on top of that, every new video is like, oh, here's a new component for my modular synth. Oh, here's this really crazy, uh, uh, OP1 synth that costs like a thousand dollars and and oh I'm going to uh, this lake in Alberta Canada to uh, just so I can record vocals on this frozen lake obviously the guy is just like on top of being in Canada where the economy is I would assume pretty good he is probably also just really good with his money and spends it well but if you're looking for one of those things where you're just like teasing yourself by looking at equipment that you can't afford, probably will never be able to afford, but really, really want, watch Andrew Huang because he will satisfy that itch that you just need to be like, oh my god, I need that so much and I'm gonna put it in the cart, but I'm not gonna pay for it, I'm just gonna leave it in the cart because that makes me feel like I'm gonna buy it even though I'm not gonna buy it because I can't afford anything. Number six is Samurai Guitarist. Sammy G has a knack for making every video feel like it has a purpose. It doesn't feel like he's uploading a video because I need content this week. It feels like every video is being put up when he wants it to be put up because he wants it to be put up then and he has a certain idea and this is what the idea should be and whether it turns out the way he wants it to or not, it's still something that he conceptualized. It's not just, oh, I have nothing to upload so I better do blank. They always feel like they're clearly thought out in the sense that it's it, it's a fully formed thought. It's a finished sentence when he's uploaded his video, I feel. Especially when it comes to the way that he delivers everything. He's got such a deadpan sense of humor that even when he's doing educational videos, it's not like heavy. It's not difficult to watch because there's so much information being thrown at you. It's just fun. It's like having a talk with someone who happens to have a lot of knowledge about guitar theory and different subgenres of music. And he's a really good guitarist, but a lot of the stuff that he does really well is talking. He's great at talking. I wish I had that kind of... Uh... See, I just did it there. I'm trying to think of a word and I can't do it. He seems to have this knack for just... He says a thing and it was a thing that was said. Nailed it. But even when he fails at something, it doesn't come across like it's a fail. It doesn't come across like it's cringy. It's just... He's fun. Number five is Ola England. Ola is probably the most traditional YouTube musician that I will be having on this list. You know, he gets a piece of gear, he puts it next to him in the video, and he tests it, he gives his opinion, he reviews it, that's it. He doesn't do a huge amount of like challenge videos or look at this weird instrument or anything to do with like a spectacle. It's just a pretty down to earth gear testing channel basically, but he does it in such a way where he's not taking himself too seriously, he's not taking the product too seriously, and he's not really taking anything too seriously, but it still comes across as professional. And the fact that he's Swedish means he's obviously better than all of us non-Scandinavian Schveen. Ola's also one of these guys that's extremely business savvy. All of the guys that are successful on YouTube are business savvy, that's just a fact. But Ola in particular is a guy that I covered for one of my music business projects in college when I was doing my degree. And the guy has a successful YouTube channel, two successful bands, and a successful guitar company. I didn't even successfully put on matching socks this morning. So if it, it's not necessarily that he talks about the music business extensively in videos, it's more just like he'll mention stuff every now and again that you'll pick up. Um, for example, a lot of people in the YouTube music scene might be dealing with the industry from a YouTuber standpoint or for something like that. Ola has dealt with it from a musician's standpoint in the sense of dealing with record companies the way that most bands would deal with record companies because he is a guitarist for the most part. You know, he's he's reviewing gear, but his main thing is his bands, The Haunted and Feared. So 
if you're looking at that. And then, of course, Solar Guitarist. So he's dealing with musicians, with endorsees and stuff like that. So he knows a lot more about the music scene and the music industry from a musician's perspective than a lot of people would. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, like I'd say just watch him. And also just the fact that he's got like a good music taste. If you're into like death metal or Pantera, the guy loves Pantera. That's all you need to know, Pantera. I feel like if I was to meet anyone off this list as well, Ola would be the one I could most easily sit down with and have a drink most comfortably and have the most to talk about without being a fanboy in a really cringy way. He just gives off that personality. He's got like that really chilled out, like tired dad vibe. <laughs> Number four is Simon the Magpie. Simon is the kind of guy that I think we all have that one musician friend that just like takes a bunch of acid and says like, hey, let's put piano strings on a bass. Hey, let's tie two guitars together by the neck so we have two guitars and one neck. Hey, let's uh, let's make a, a guitar pedal out of a baby's head. The guy just comes up with ridiculous stuff and it doesn't come across as forced eccentricities. Is that how you say that? Eccentricities? He just seems like he's a weird guy and he has like this workshop that he works in that looks all like grimy and stuff but it looks so... Like I know people that have a workshop that looks exactly like that where there's just stupid drawings on everything. It doesn't look like a professional workshop but that's where the most creativity gets done. I've been told before by one of my uh, lecturers that a clean desk is for productivity a messy desk is for creativity and look at Simon the Magpie's channel and there is creativity all over it. It's just such an eccentric channel and it's funny. Just give him a go. His delivery is so signature that it just, it you'll know after one video already what you're getting yourself into and check it out. Number three is The Do. The Do is the best of both worlds. I love guitars. I love music, but I'm sick of hearing about Joe Satriani and Steve Vai and Eve Ingve Malmsteen and all these guitarists just talk about the same like 8 to 10 guitarists that shred really good and they have amazing gear and you're hearing about like a guitar that they bought because they saw that Ingve Malmsteen touched one in 1987 and uh, Joe Satriani farted on some fella that was holding this guitar in 1990. I don't give a shit. I don't listen to so many guitarists because I've been, like, just had them drilled into my head from other guitarists, so I just don't care. I'm, they're too hyped up and I don't care anymore. I'm not gonna listen to Dream Theater specifically because I've been told about Dream Theater by so many of their fans, and their fans are unbearable. So I'm not gonna listen to them because they've been so overhyped. Even Metallica. Metallica's my favorite band. I joined a Metallica fan page on Facebook last week. It is the cringiest thing you will ever see. All of the dead memes that people say, like, oh, Lars is snare drum, oh, blame it on Lars, oh, blah, blah, blah. All of those dead memes are real opinions that people are posting in this Metallica fan page. It's not ironic. I'm telling you, it's not ironic, it's real. These people are really saying this with the bad grammar and everything, and it's just, I can't stand it because people are coming across so cringy by being so generic. Like, I love Metallica. Metallica's my favorite band, but I cannot talk to other people that are such fans for extended periods of time. Maybe I come across as pretentious, I don't know, but I feel like a lot of guitarists come across as pretentious because they all love the same guitarists. I'm sorry, but I'm not sitting through another lecture about how Rory Gallagher is an inspiration. He's not to me, I don't care. So how does this fit in with The Do? <laughs> the Do, everyone will probably know him from playing guitar on Omegle or Omegle, or however you're pronouncing it. That's how a lot of people would know him. He plays guitar, and he's a great guitarist, he's a good pianist, he's even a pretty good vocalist. But what else does he do? He does gaming videos. And he's not necessarily, like, the funniest guy ever, but he does it in, like, this squad of people. Like, a group of people that he always plays with on Twitch. And the humor they come out with is just absolute 
filth. Like, it's just pure shock humor. That's all it is. And it's funny. It's it's so funny. Do is not usually the funniest part of it, but his editing is so spot on and the way he plays with these people and he even brings in some of his music stuff into the gaming and it's a good crossover because you're not listening to some guy just talk and talk and talk about specs for a Gibson guitar that hasn't been changed for the last 10 years anyway. It's just, it's, it's easy to watch. It's easy to watch. That's what it is. It's good gaming. Uh, but you know he's a musician as well, so it's like, oh, there's some common ground there. And then it's like just that sense of humor comes into it, and there's enough music there that you can fulfill that like music YouTuber vibe that you want to get into, but just watch him. Number two is Emma Blackery. Again, much like Wheezy Waiter, obviously Emma is not a music-centric YouTube channel, but she has a very interesting story. Despite her channel's somewhat lack of upload consistency throughout the years, she has always been consistently working on music or releasing music. And if you were to focus on her actual YouTube, it's really interesting to get invested into. Uh, maybe more for me because I've been watching her for so many years. I've been watching her since maybe 2014 or something like that. If you're looking at her, from her earliest videos where she comes across as a very angsty, spiteful teenager and then she kind of evolves into just like that becomes a character where she's like being sassy and rude and then after a couple of years, like two or three years ago for a while, she had this very like, I'm gonna be nice, I'm not gonna be mean anymore and she had this whole thing where she was forcing herself to always be positive and then there was a time when she was like confused and angry and depressed and and then Recently, she's gone through this thing where she's kind of admitted, okay, I'm in this really bad place, but she's kind of accepted it, and it comes across as very genuine. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, because it might not be interesting to some people, but all of this evolution throughout her channel's lifetime has reflected in her music. She even says herself, she rips off, she ripped off Hayley Williams quite a lot, because Hayley Williams was a huge inspiration to her. Through the years, she's uh, evolved that personality through her music. Her music has changed. You know, a lot of people might be hit or miss with her personality. I never had an issue with her as a person. She never like annoyed me the way I've seen that other people get annoyed by her personality, but whatever. Um, if she is your cup of tea when you pick her up, then stick with it. Go through all of her videos, get invested, and then kind of just like listen to her music as she's releasing it. The reason why I have her so high on this list actually is because she isn't a music-centric YouTuber, but she's got such a huge following of fans, like genuine fans. She's gone past that point of being the big viral YouTuber to now where all of the people that do watch her videos are big fans, and she has a lot of them. So if you're looking at a huge group of people and she's showing off, you know, music production and stuff, she's showing off how she edits videos. I remember I learned how to edit a video because she uploaded how she edits her videos. That's exactly how I learned, uh, was by watching how she cut and paste and blah 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 in Logic Pro, and or not Logic Pro, in uh, Final Cut Pro, and that's how I learned. So the fact that she is such a variety YouTuber, in terms of like doing music stuff, but mostly sketches, vlogs, Q and A's, all that stuff. She is able to expose so many more people to the world of music and music production and video production than anyone else on this list, because all these other people have already made the music world as their niche. That's, they're targeting the people that are already kind of in that fan base. Emma is able to expose so many more people to that world and I think that that makes it really it, it's just it, it's huge and then also just the fact that she's releasing a new either single or album soon I think a couple of weeks ago she uploaded a, a behind the scenes of her new music videos so that's an indicator but yeah check her out I mean like I said she's not for everybody and um, for sure but I'd still definitely recommend trying her out at least even if you checked her out in the past and didn't like her Check out her new videos, because she comes across as very genuine, I think, in her new videos. Maybe she's always come across genuine, but it's just that evolution of personality. Oh no, I'm not going to get too far into it. But basically, I'll say I am very proud looking at where she is now compared to how she was a few years ago, mentally. 
I mean, it, she looks like she's come a long way, and I hope that a lot of people support what she comes out with in the next few weeks. Number one, drum roll. It's Rob Scallon. It's, it's kind of an obvious pick that it would be Rob Scallon. I mean, he is the most popular person on this list, I believe, um, in terms of subscribers and everything like that. So it's not exactly an original opinion that Rob Scallon is good. Uh, it's, it's not like an obscure pick of some really small YouTuber that would be my number one. Um, it's just Rob Scallon. I don't have a huge amount to say about him. Um, in my opinion, he just makes the best videos. He makes the best music. You know, even as I was scripting this video, I was listening to the Anchor EP. And The Scene Is Dead is another album that's like, that was like a precursor to the Doom soundtrack. And it's, you know, he has such a versatility and everything to do with like his humor, he knows when to bring it out, he knows how to make stuff interesting, the scale of his videos, everything is just, I, I feel like he just makes the best videos. And I watch every single one, I've probably watched every single one of his videos at least three times, and I would highly recommend to everyone to try at least one. If I was to recommend one video by him to watch, I would say Rain. To, to watch Rain, but when he does the delay acoustic, you see like the full day's worth of work in that video. I'm sure everybody has, but if you have not, or even if you have, watch that video again, because that's my favorite video by him, is doing Rain, what's the name of it? It's doing Rain, but acoustic. Getting delay without using any effects, that's what it is. It, and watch that and just admire the fucking work ethic that that guy has. And his two friends, uh, Jeff, and I can't remember the other guy's name. He's my favorite music YouTuber, absolutely. Uh, no question about it. And there we have it. That's my 10 favorite musicians on YouTube. If you enjoyed, please do feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. If you want to watch more of my videos, then you're more than welcome to check them out as well. Yeah. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.